first, uh, thanks everybody for coming uh, today. You're one of the smart 850 or so people that signed up for this. Of course, you know only a fraction of you will be here live today and we'll send out the invitation, uh, or not the invitation, the replay of, of what happens today uh, after it's all over, certainly by tomorrow. Um, I'm going to introduce Ariel in a second. There's going to be plenty of time for Q&A, but just a couple little housekeeping things. First of all, I want to thank Rachel and Sebastian and Emily. Emily is the new, newest member of this uh, crazy team. So uh, thank you, everybody, for making this possible. Um, along the way, Ariel is going to start with a, a presentation, if you will, and there'll be plenty of time for Q&A. So along the way, as you hear things, um, as you you know, have questions, et cetera, put them in the Q&A and we'll be pulling them out and have plenty of time for that. Um, William is saying he can't hear me. Can somebody else tell me that you can? Ariel, you want to nod? I can. Ariel's <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so busy Hi, getting ready. <laughs> yes, All many right. people are saying they can hear. Hello. Okay, everyone. good. So I, we, will, we will not worry. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So um, I've known Ariel for a very, very long time. Uh, one of my favorite things about her is that she not only knows a lot, but she's absolutely willing to share it. Uh, and she spent a lot of her career, not all, but a lot of it working with developing artists. So it's always so, you know, it's fun to hear these stories about what Beyonce did or Metallica did or, you know, whoever it may be. Uh, but it's a lot harder to get your first thousand fans, your first 500 fans, your first 10,000 fans. And Ariel's done a lot of that as well. So Ariel, thanks so much for joining us. Your ethos is the Bands in Town ethos, and that is to help you know, artists find fans. And uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today from a, a publicity and PR level. So um, take it away. Thanks for having me. And I'm really honored to be here with Bands in Town. It is a platform that we recommend to all of our clients, whether they are coming on board for PR or for long-term planning, which is another thing that we do. We write marketing plans. So I hope you can see my screen. It is sharing. I just want to. Right now we're looking at you, I think. Now here it comes, you're there. Okay, great. So Bruce asked me to put together a webinar, which we uh, entitled Guaranteed Music Publicity Placements, which is, it's big words, um, but I promise you that publicity is a system. It is a learnable system. It can be a frustrating system, but it is learnable and it is not rocket science. It really just takes, unlike God-given musical talent, um, just understanding sort of how it works and then the steps that you need to organize for yourself to make it work for you. So that's what I'm going to cover today. Um, basically, you create a plan and you follow the plan. And I'm going to break this down into three main steps, and that's what this webinar um, is going to outline. So the first thing I'd like to address and, and highlight is people often use the word publicity and PR sort of in the same breath, and they bounce back and forth between those two things. And I want to shed a little bit of light on the distinction between the two. So public relations or PR is all of the communications that takes place between you and the public, right? Public relations. So the public can mean fans. It can mean people in the music business. It can mean people that are not fans yet. It can mean um, just sort of everyone out there. So your PR strategy is going to involve social media, building your list, and any kind of fan outreach that you're doing. When you make a link and you share it and you um, let everyone know on your Bands in Town page, that is PR. Now, publicity is a little different, and that's the distinction. It is attention given to someone or something by the media. Now, the media when I started doing PR 25 years ago, meant something very, very different than it means today. So we have what we refer to as traditional media, which would be magazines, newspapers, television, 
Radio. And then we have the wild, wild west in the new media world. And that's where a lot of musicians and artists play blogs, podcasts, internet radio stations, playlists. Um, so your publicity strategy handles relationship to all of those things. So when you get on a playlist, that is publicity. When you get a fan to sign up to your mailing list, that is PR. So here we go, three steps. The first step and the theme today is cats. Um, the first step is going to be getting ready for publicity. And um, for those of you who, who only know that I've known Bruce for many, many years, uh, my name is Arielle Hyatt. I run Cyber PR Music. We are a music strategy, PR and education firm for musicians. So like Bruce said, I, I enjoy sharing what I learn as I learn it with the greater community because it's already hard enough to be an artist and to make the music and to get the music right. And then there's so much stuff that you need to learn in order to be good at it. Um, I have spoken and taught all over the world to over 100,000 musicians and music industry colleagues on the subject of effective marketing. So whether that is taking the flavor of writing marketing plans or PR or social media, um, that is my passion. That is actually how I spend my free time teaching artists. Uh, my agency has run over 5,000 music publicity campaigns for artists of all genres and at all levels of their careers. And, and like Bruce mentioned, yes, we, we have worked for some major artists, but mostly, um, we play in the sandbox with emerging independent musicians. And publicity, as you know, because you're here, is a critical building block to master and understand. And this is Hunter C. Thompson. The C is for cat. She turned 18 this week. Okay, there is a harrowing statistic which I want to present. For every one journalist, that is person who is getting paid to create and publish and create, make media for the public to consume, there are seven publicists. That is um, a bitter pill to swallow. And it is one of the reasons why getting publicity is not that easy and takes a system. Publicists have systems. Whether those systems are good or not, that's a whole other webinar, but publicists do have a system that they work with, and um, I'm going to talk about that. So the first thing to know, successful publicity is all about your preparation. You want to measure many times and cut once. What I often see with artists is the cut or the sending the media pitch out or the press release happens way before the measuring has happened. So before you pull the trigger and you send out any pitches or you try to get PR, you want to make sure that you're fully prepared so that you put your best foot forward. That this is 50% of the battle. What do they say? 50% is just showing up. Preparing is the showing up part in PR. And something else to sort of get, and I think when I alluded to PR versus publicity, it is never only about your music. So artists many times come to us and say, our music is excellent, the cream always rises to the top. I wish that were true, but the media and writers take into account other things, including your brand, your photos, your colors, your themes. What is your story and how are you talking about yourself? How does your website look? What is your social media saying? And do you have an audience? Are there people out there who are engaging with you? Are there numbers on your social channels? These are all things that anyone with the Google can find out in moments. So you do want to make sure that you have spent a little bit of time on those things before you dive in. Um, I created a little download for you today. You can go to bit.ly forward slash musician BIT for bands in town with an underscore in the middle, all uppercase, and download the music publicity check sheet. It will step you along all of the basic things that you need to prepare to get yourself um, acclimatized to a PR campaign. Now, when you're creating your publicity strategy, the media pitch is at the heart of it. 
And it should include basics like your genres, who you get compared to, facts about your band, and maybe niches if you're a singer songwriter who's a social justice warrior. Maybe that's a niche, for example. It should also contain feelings and values because that is something that can really make you stand out to the media. So when I talk about that, here's some questions that you could begin to um, align. Why do you make music in the first place? What does your art bring to the world? Is there something you're passionate about, like a charity or does your music align with something? So many pitches lack these elements and they are crucial to get the press to respond. So there is an enormous difference, just like there's a difference between PR and publicity, there's a difference between your bio and your pitch. Your bio, which we call a signature story around here, is a long format thing that addresses the story of who you are, how you started to make music, um, what your history is around the creation of your music, and it gives the reader a whole lot of background information about you. When you are pitching the media, that is a surefire way to get them to delete your email immediately if it's too long. So a pitch is a short format thing, usually like one or two paragraphs, and it is designed specifically for the media and it is tailored to suit each type of ask. So you would pitch a podcaster for an interview very differently than you would pitch a local newspaper for a show coming up. Um, Obviously, for a show, you would include the show date, the time, the ticket price, the venue address, where you might be able to buy tickets, who's opening for you, is it 21 and over? That is the kind of thing that goes into a show pitch. A podcaster pitch, you might want to say why you're qualified to be an interesting interview. You're funny, you're witty, you're sardonic, you're sarcastic, you are political, you're crazy, you're weird, you have some historical knowledge of something that the podcast talks about like that. So understand there is an enormous difference. And again, each pitch needs to be customized. A pitch should give a sense of what your music sounds like and what feelings you want to evoke. This is another thing that is very often missing from artist pitches. So what does the music sound like? Is it rock? Is it folk? Is it singer songwriter? I would even go out on a limb and put a comparison or two. I know a lot of clients we work with are very resistant saying that they don't really like to be compared to anyone, which I understand, but you don't sound like nothing. You probably sound like something. So comparisons can be good. Quoting the media, a fan, your mom, a, anyone that said something is also a smart way to frame as people believe what other people say more than they will tend to believe what you say in the form of a pitch. You also might want to talk about in your pitch what emotions you're trying to evoke. Are you trying to get people to think? Is it thoughtful? Is it melancholy? Is it happy and you want them to shake their butts and dance? Is it sad? Are you making a statement about something happening in the world in your music? Would someone dance to it and how? Or what would they want to do when they hear you? These are all things that paint a amazing portrait of your music and will grab a media person's attention. Okay, so we've talked about step one, which is really thinking about how to prepare a pitch. Again, a pitch should be one to three paragraphs at the very most. It should be targeted and it should also, of course, include your music. Now we're going to talk a little bit about your strategy and how to prepare who to pitch to. So you want to do your research and I see many times artists get like a giant list, like the Indie Bible, or they buy a list, or they go all over the internet and they Google top music blogs and they make a spreadsheet of like Pitchfork and Drowned in Sound and Stereo Gum and the biggest, biggest, biggest music blogs. Those are probably if you are in the 500 to 10,000 level of fan base, not going to pay much attention to you because they're looking for the larger audiences. So search on Google, 
You can use Submit Hub or Music Submit, Hype Machine. There are actually some good music writers on Fluence and Fiverr. If you are touring or have local gigs, ask your local promoter or the venue booker for their press list. Instead of going, okay, I need all the local media in Philadelphia, I promise you that if you're playing a club in Philly, the local media list is already edited, procured, and perfectly ready to go and in the hands of the local promoter or the venue booker. So ask them, can you share it with me? Look at other artists from your circuit, your hometown, see where they were covered. I call this the yellow brick road. So find an artist that's maybe one or two years ahead of where you wish you were. Don't go like, okay, I'm going to look at, you know, where Beyonce was covered this week because my music sort of sounds like her. Go small and see where those artists are getting coverage. Okay. Also, another thing to know you are going to be most of the time when you're preparing a publicity campaign, pitching one track at a time. We live in a single base world. We listen to playlists. It is very hard to get the media to cover an entire album or an EP. They are short on time. And most of the time they are only writing about one track on their music blog. So that's okay. You can have a whole album that you share or a whole EP that you share, but really pick one focus track when you're pitching. Here is something to understand. A lot of us are Spotify obsessed these days and we wanna get the most amount of plays on Spotify. We wanna get on Spotify playlists. We wanna like have people pre-save us. All of that is key and crucial. That is your PR, your publicity should be centered around SoundCloud. The media use SoundCloud, why? One, the embed codes, very, very easy to grab and put on your blog. The reason why the media likes SoundCloud better is you don't have to be forced to log in to use it. So if I'm on a music blog and I wanna press play and hear a song and there's a Spotify player, Spotify will never say, please log in. Sorry, SoundCloud will never say, please log in. Spotify will always say, please log in. So that is a barrier to entry that music blogs are fully aware of. So you want to use SoundCloud, pimp out your SoundCloud page, learn how to use it. Like how do you share the private uh, tracks or unlisted tracks before something comes out and also understand how to use embed codes because music blogs might ask you, um, can I have the embed code? And you want to make sure you know how to share it. Of course, if you're going for Spotify playlists or if there's a blog that highlights Spotify tracks, you will be sharing Spotify as well. And if you're using Submit Hub, you will put those both links as well as YouTube and other links. I want to talk a little bit about Bands in Town for Artists because Bands in Town for Artists is a fabulous tool that you can use to use in the PR realm for your fans, it also helps social proof for the industry. So oftentimes when we are pitching to the media, we might say our artist has X amount of followers on socials. And if they have a truly engaged fan base on Bands in Town, we will use that in our pitches. Um, so you can message all of your followers as you're going through your process of practicing PR. And practicing PR, which is getting fans to understand you and your brand, is a great way to prepare yourself for publicity. Another thing you want to do as you're preparing your press list is you want to understand the zeitgeist of what's going on in the music world. Most of the larger blogs cover trendy music. Now, what is trendy music? Hip hop, EDM, um, things that have a lot of auto tune, things that are trending. So if you look at what are the most shared things on music blogs, and you can do that very, very easily by just Googling. Um, don't begin to get sad if you make acid jazz or you make traditional folk sounding that's not like hyper indie hipster. 
just understand that you're just going to have to do a little bit more research in your area. One of our superpowers at Cyber PR is we tend to work for artists that are not making flavor of the day music that's wildly trendy. And we have a giant database of blogs and playlists and outlets that like more niche based things. So again, when you're doing your research, look for artists that sound a little bit like you, kind of fit into your wheelhouse, would fit into the same playlist as you, and search and find out where are they getting coverage, and then go after those music blogs, those playlists, those podcasts, et cetera. Okay, so you've got your pitch. You've got at least a decent list. And I always say 10 to 15 outlets to pitch if you've researched them and you understand them and they're perfect for you is a thousand times better than a giant list where you're just vomiting information out, trying to get anyone, like seeing, seeing how much spaghetti sticks to the wall. But you wanna follow this, three strikes and you're out. So pitch once, you don't hear from them. Pitch twice, you don't hear from them. Pitch a third time. The one thing we would also do, we recommend you do, is use a little tool which you can find for free called Boomerang if you're using Gmail. It will show you which editors have actually opened up your emails. And what I often find with my PR team when they're getting discouraged or sad, I say, okay, let's look at who actually opened the pitches. And many times we're getting all upset and bent out of shape and, oh, this person never paid attention. They didn't even see the email. So then you might want to get clever and figure out other places to pitch. Do you want to slide into someone's DMs on Instagram? Maybe send a very polite tweet like, hey, really trying to get out in front of you. I sent you an email. Would love for you to listen to my track. Um, Or maybe you do it on Facebook. Try hitting the writers or the publications on social media if you are realizing that they are not opening your pitch. So that's what we do here at Cyber PR. After the third email, when they haven't opened it at all, we prepare a very, very polite social media poke, and it oftentimes can do the trick. Step three is going to be your PR timeline. A lot of artists that we work with do not understand how much planning good publicity actually takes. So I've outlined a little bit of um, a timing schedule for you. So the first thing to understand is what the old school media refers to as long lead press. Long lead press refers to big glossy magazines like Vanity Fair, you know, the ones that are once a month and they're big and they're heavy and they clearly take time to get printed somewhere. You need three months lead time. And actually I'm on something called the PR list right now. We are at September. It is now like coming up on the PR list that it's too late to be pitching holiday songs. So it's amazing when you're going for these long lead PR looks, give yourself three months minimum. Monthly newspapers, you wanna give them between six and eight weeks. Daily papers, even for the calendar listings, you wanna give them at least three weeks notice. And if you're trying to get a blog premiere, four to six weeks minimum. So you wanna have your private SoundCloud, your artwork, your pitch, everything lined up. And six weeks before you want that premiere to go live, you start pitching to the music blogs. Okay, let's get into some individual types of PR. The first one is going to be show PR or tour publicity. Because you came to this webinar because of bands in town, I imagine you probably have some shows or at least live streams happening. This is um, something that should be started about eight weeks before you've got your show. Like I talked about earlier, you want to contact the local promoter or the booker at the venue and get their media list. Once you have that media list and you start combing through it, you want to be aware, and you'll probably see this, especially in cities that are a little bit larger, the calendar editor is normally not the same person as the music writer. 
So the music writer might be writing um, like a large format article or like several beautiful like mentions about like these are the things coming up around town. The calendar editor might just be doing a rundown of this is what you can find where. Two separate email addresses, two separate people. So make sure that you know that. Another thing that happens often is you may be able to submit your own events online. So a lot of daily newspapers, they don't have calendar editors anymore, or they have one exhausted person who's doing all the events for the community. And when I say all the events, I mean like the hospital opening hours, as well as all of the entertainment and the galleries and the restaurants, they're doing it all. So they will have a place online where you can submit your stuff. It will ask you for like all the details. So be aware that that is something that you can do proactively yourself in many, many tour markets. Here's another thing. A lot of artists I talk to play their local area often and they get really nervous about overexposure as you should be. And this applies in the PR world. Like you obviously don't want to play major, major events where you have to bring the audience like every two weeks because that will be exhausting. Of course, if you're an artist that plays like a wine bar or a coffee shop or a place where there's already people coming, this, this is a little bit different. But many times artists say to me, oh, I don't want to publicize that because it's not the big show. Publicize every local gig because not only will it give you more of an affinity and understanding that the media will recognize and see you, Consistency is key to establish yourself in a market. So even if it's like a smaller gig, this is the other thing. You've ever heard this weird media term, if it, if it bleeds, it leads. When I was a tour publicist and I would have to I'd have all my bands out on the road and I would have to go to all the dailies and weeklies and monthlies and specialty newspapers, very often we would get really, really bad news. Like, Elton John was playing or Billy Joel was playing or there was like an, an enormous festival happening in the park with 50 bands and I would have like a small band playing in a medium-sized venue and they would get into just the calendar and obviously the large band would be getting all the publicity that week. But there are weeks when things are slower and there's not as much competition. So your wine bar gig or your coffee shop gig or your gig where you're the opening act, you might actually end up getting some publicity if you stay consistent. Okay, so when you are doing tour or show publicity, you must include the following. You want all details about your show in the form of a press release. You wanna include the venue address. I know that sounds crazy. Even if the venue is one that is in a local area that people are familiar with, include it. Include times, openers, and links to all sites and socials, not just your own, but the venue's Facebook page, the venue's Instagram, the opening acts Instagram, all the details. Is it 16 up? Is it 21 up? What time are doors? What time is show? Is there something interesting happening that night? Is there a charity event? All the details you can in the form of a press release. And tell the local story. If you're collaborating with any local recording studios or artists, designers, makeup and hair people, if your video was shot in uh, the hometown where the outlet is based, this is very important. This is also establishing that you are a person from that area and you are utilizing local people. Include any live video if you have it. And also make sure all of your assets that you include, like your photos, are well labeled and easily downloadable from your website. You don't want to piss off a writer by sending them some sort of giant weird attachment that is not well labeled. Okay, so there are the steps for tour and show publicity. Let's talk a little bit about live stream PR. I wrote live stream publicity. I probably should have said live stream PR because nine times out of 10, when you're going to be publicizing your live stream, it's going to be more a fan facing event, unless of course you've got an angle for your stream that maybe that's like a charity or it's a benefit or it's like in cahoots with a venue that's doing a lot of live streaming. So make sure that 
you also prepare many weeks in advance, get your website prepped, add your bands in town widget where, so there's a ticket link if you're selling tickets or if it's free. You wanna send a dedicated email to your mailing list. You also want to send a message out to all of your followers on bands in town. For those of you who are a little more old school, my instincts want to say post to trackers because that's what they used to call it. Now they're calling it messaging your fans. Um, so if you're familiar with post to trackers, that's what you want to do. If, if you're, if you are using bands in town, you want to message everyone. You also want to make sure that you're announcing it across your socials, make banners, make multiple posts. Remember a tweet lasts 45 seconds. People look and forget, look and forget, look and forget. So many different ways to announce. You also wanna use the geo-targeting through Bands in Town so that you're not pushing a show in Los Angeles to your entire national database. That will piss people off. So make sure that it is local and it is targeted. And again, if your live stream is newsworthy or it has an angle that is perfect for local press, definitely target for local coverage. So just talked a little bit about PR for your community, just as important as public relations is as publicity for your media look. So I grabbed a couple of screenshots. Lo Marie is one of our jazz artists. She always sends out a notification that when she's going to be streaming shows, and um, I love to see her pop up in my inbox. That's what it looks like when it arrives. Josh Turk, another client of ours, he had a really great way of promoting a recent show. He got on the Twitch front page, which is like a noteworthy and cool thing that happened for him. And so he made a message and he was like, y'all, I am on the front page of Twitch, which was really cool. Um, Eli Lev is someone who does a lot of live streaming using Bands in Town and he's got, um, he announces where the live stream is going to be. I love this feature on Bands in Town. So you can see on Lo Marie's, she's, she's streaming on YouTube. Eli is streaming on Instagram and Josh is streaming on um, Twitch. So Bands in I'm, Town. I'm going to interrupt you just one second here. For those of you who may not have used messaging in a while, these are beautiful new messages that have been sent. So you, you'll notice that they uh, include pictures and a lot more customization than they used to. And and I think it makes it a much more useful tool for, for all the things Ariel was talking about. So I apologize. I had to, had to get the shameless plug in there. No, I agree. And again, another tool, which we don't have a ton of time to talk about tools to use, but you can see Josh created a special Twitch front page graphic that he's sharing. He probably used Canva because I taught him to use Canva, but that's a great platform where you can drop all kinds of images in and you can lay things up in a really nice branded way. Okay, so what the heck do you do with publicity after you get it? This is another pitfall that I see artists, they work so hard to make the PR happen. And then I don't know why, but they don't share it. So here's some examples of some publicity that we've gotten for some of our artists over the years. These are tiles that we've made to share on Instagram, of course. Canva, you can pop any kind of thing in. They've got a million, zillion different types of layouts. Um, so you want to make sure that your fans know that you got this great media. Put it like this on your socials, put it on your website. And of course, this gives you an opportunity to tag the publication or the writer that featured you. Because once they see that you're a hardworking artist that actually does that, the media pays attention and they can use what you're doing to be leveraged. So leverageability is key. So after you've gotten the PR and you visualize it, you can leverage it. Show the promoter, the venue, the booker, the manager that you are publicity worthy, that you work hard to get your own publicity. And that will set you apart from the other 50 artists that are trying to get in that night to that venue. Mention also that you will share on socials and you'll notify your fans on Bands in Town if you've got a large following there um, through geo-targeted messaging. Promoters 
and Bruce can talk to this because he runs a booking agency, they don't like to take risks where they think, okay, if I book this band, only nine people are going to show up. So if you've got statistical evidence, I've got 600 people following me in your town on Bands in Town and I can geo-target them. That is something that could get you the gig. It also works in the industry with managers and labels. It also works for social proof. I've seen many, many artists take a little snippet of a great article that they received and they post it on their Facebook or their Instagram and then they use that in their advertising campaigns. Remember, people believe what other people say more than they believe what you say. So it could be a great strategy for attracting more fans. Just a little trick on using Bands in Town for social proof. You talked about the geotargeting and, hey, I've got 400 fans in this city an hour away or whatever it may be. That's a very valuable tool as um, when you're trying to book a date, when you're trying to promote a date, you know, hey, I've already got some people that love me there. One way to increase those followers is we've got the this... Uh, play my city function. Somebody's going to correct me. I think we changed the name of it. So correct me in the chat, if you will. But the idea is basically you encourage fans to say, tell me where you want to come play, where you want us to come play. And that helps you grow followers in those cities. And then as part of the whole process that Ariel's talking about, I think you jump in and you say, this is what I have for followers in Cleveland. And this is what I have for followers in Columbus, et cetera. So yeah, so as a user, I use it as a fan and I follow a ton of artists. Whenever I log in and look at an artist that I'm interested in on Bands in Town, a little button pops up and it says, come play my town. And then it has the name right. of my town. I live now in rural Massachusetts. So I'm always clicking it because I used to play, you know, live in New York City, click in New York mm -hmm. City. That was not so hard, but I want more artists to come to where I am. And, and people are motivated by local by where they live locally. So I was trying to figure out how do we wrap up an entire talk about how to get PR. And I found two really good quotes um, for some parting words. Dr. Seuss, why fit in when you were born to stand out? And Mark Raggin, who is a monster in the sort of PR world, well, well known. And I loved this because for those of you who might have this dialogue in your head about, well, I really don't want to do this. It's too much work. And I want to hire a PR firm. I love this quote. Every once in a while, I'll sit down with a jug of Jack Daniels and a bottle of Advil and dig through old press releases to see if PR agencies have learned how to write. So not all PR agencies are created equal. There is a sort of lazy thing that happens, which is like write press release, send it out into the world, see what sticks. And you do not want to get involved with a PR firm that puts you in that light. So be mindful if hiring PR is what you're looking to do, that um, they understand how the music business works and how to get results. Um, in the marketing material, um, Bands in Town said, please make your new book, The Ultimate Guide to Music Publicity, available, which I have done. It is on Amazon for much more than $7. It is on my website for $7. If you would like a full primer with exercises and how-tos and very inspiring stories from 11 independent artists on how they tackled their own publicity and PR journeys, please pick it up. I'd love to have you read it. And um, you can find me at cyberpiermusic.com. I've written over 300 articles there, which will navigate you through uh, publicity. There's, there's many, many articles also about other things in the marketing and social media worlds. And finally, if you want to talk to me about being your publicist, uh, feel free to email me at ah at cyberpr.com. That's awesome. Thank you. We've got some great questions, but just to, to play off that one, when do you think is the right time for an artist to, to hire a publicist like you? I mean, too early, too late. I mean, I, I've seen everybody make all the mistakes. What's, what's the right time? So this is a very hard to answer question. The right time is, I would base it on three things. Number one, you want to make sure you've got those things I talked about in the very beginning of this presentation, your brand, your voice, your website, your colors, your logo, some engagement with an audience. You don't want, I mean, we're working right now with a client who 
has absolutely nothing going on. And it's going to be a slog for us to get him the media attention that he wants. So make sure you have that. Second thing, make sure you feel like you have the time and the energy. It's amazing how much time it takes to do your own PR. And it is amazing how much time once you hire a publicist, they will ask you to do things, answer questions, show up for things, um, send them information like what you're doing. You want to have something going on when you hire a publicist. It's, it's not just about like, oh, now they're going to be going and doing all the work. So be sure that if you are looking to hire a publicist, you can make yourself available and you've got some stuff going on. And by stuff, I mean more than one single release. Maybe there's a video, maybe there is like a series that you're working on. Maybe there's some shows, some live streams, things that are publicizable, not just, I have a track, it's dropping on this Friday. That's the baseline. And then awesome. the, third, the third thing I would also say about hiring a publicist is, it's expensive. I always love working with artists that have tried to at least do a little bit of their own PR first so they understand the painful process that it takes to actually get a result. I hate when artists hire us and they come back to us and they're really, really disappointed because they didn't get like giant, they didn't get Rolling Stone and they've got 500 followers. So understand what your publicist is going through. It's super, super hard to get publicity. So, um, if you are looking to hire a publicist, doing a little bit of it on your own first, I think is a prerequisite. We worked with an artist recently on an agency level who had done it themselves for a year, year and a half with a little bit of success actually. And now they were at the point where they wanted to hire the publicist and they actually turned over to the publicist a list of like 17 people like they wrote about me they almost wrote about me but their mother got sick and they couldn't come to the show i mean the publicist called me up and said thank you this is my favorite client ever because the artist had given them a i don't want to say a roadmap, but at least pointed them in the right direction of what was going to be successful so i think it's important to think about all of this as a continuum you know you start it yourself and at some point you know you need help etc cetera, etc cetera. so awesome and don't so fear, don't fear submit hub submit hub 50 bucks yeah lots of submissions getting feedback getting your initial placement it's amazing and by the way every publicist uses it just fyi no and also it gives you something to talk about you know i'm on these three playlists now they may not be big and awesome incredible playlists but they're credible playlists and you may not be getting a million streams but you're getting 7000 streams and that's 7000 more you had than before you spent that 50 bucks so great stuff all right, so we got a lot of good questions. One of them, and you know, we'll just somebody asked, what do you think you need in terms of a budget to hire a publicist in the beginning? Or and I, I don't want you to negotiate this on screen, but can you give us a range or something? Yeah. So there's a kind of a horrible thing that happens in the world of music publicity, which is called what the market can bear. So if you're Googleable and you have a corporate job and you look like you make a lot of money, you're going to get a proposal from most PR firms where they're going to be charging more than if you're totally indie and you call and say, listen, I'm really budget conscious. That is just a sad reality of the way PR works. Um, okay, let's talk about it really, though. A small person who is starting up and still really young and new could charge as little as 500 bucks a month. A national PR firm, like one that works for household names, is going to start off somewhere in the two to $3,000 per month with a three-month minimum. I often see artists, even artists where money is not a giant issue, feel like that by going to those giant publicists, they're somehow going to jump to the front of the line. There is no jumping to the front of the line. Every publicist has to prove to the outlet, your following, your, your social proof, all of that. It's very rare that a giant publicist can, can make a lot happen. Yes, they can pull a favor here and there at maybe a small publication or a local publication, but those giant looks, you have to earn them with time, trust, and a track record. Awesome. 
I also think uh, everybody likes somebody who is going to be with them for a while. So, you know, hey, I want, what can you do in a month? I can't do anything in a month. What can you do in six months? We can build something together. So I, I love those kind of relationships and I encourage them. On a dollar level, but on a, on a, in a cl slightly different way, if somebody is going in with a very limited budget, like $1,000, $1,200, and they want to maybe buy some Facebook ads or playlist promo or a little, I don't know if they can hire a publicist within a budget like that, but where would you, where would you divide somebody who, let's say, has 1000 maybe even $2,000 to spend? Um, where would you start? I would, um, you know, such a hard question because... I see artists ignore the fan building side of their house so much and they they blow a lot of money on PR and PR doesn't normally make fans. PR makes PR. Right. And, you know, there's very few, I mean, yes, of course, there are music fans that are reading music blogs and they're discovering music on playlists, absolutely. But there's something ridiculous, like a billion playlists on Spotify. And, and like Bruce was saying, some of them might only have like 100 or 200 followers. I would rather see you spend 1,000 of those $2,000 on what is my email strategy or my text messaging strategy if you're not an email user, if your fans are really young. How are you getting fans to pay attention to you and like you and engage with you? And even if you only have 20 people on your email list, set it up well, set it up right, make sure that it's parsable, make sure you can set up welcome series, auto responders, spend your money on that main line of communication and spend a little bit less on, on PR. You cannot hang the moon on PR. Many, many artists still believe that you can. Unfortunately, the public relations side of your house, the, the brand, the tone, the all of that is equally, if not more important because a lot of good publicity and no fans does not equal participation, which is what you want. Um, do you have an opinion about Wix or other band site, uh, website builders rather for, for artists? I'm not a giant Wix fan, mostly because I hate their branding. When you go with you, the lower tiered products, you go and it's like Wix, Wix, Wix. It's like horrible. Um, I'm an enormous fan of Bands in Town. It is easy. I think to, you mean Banzoogle. Sorry, Banzoogle. Sure. Banzoogle. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, by the way. I'm not cold medicine, if anyone can tell. Banzoogle. Um, it's You're also a new mom, aren't you? Isn't, how old is your baby now? He's a year and a half. And does he sleep? Yes, he does. Thank God. All right. So you have no excuse anymore. No, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> bands Google. It's wonderful. It's easy. It's designed for musicians and bands. So they have all the things that artists can need. If you want to do with something a little bit more slick, we do love Squarespace. If you are looking to integrate like a, a website that has a lot of like merchandise and shopping, yes, WordPress. But if you don't know how to consistently update a WordPress website and you have to hire a designer to constantly update for you, please, please, please use Banzoogle. It was wonderful. They have a service. Um, and it's it's just, it's, it's user-friendly and they update everything for you. So you don't have to constantly go in and make sure that it's compliant. Right. Awesome. Um, somebody asked about, does anyone use street teams anymore? In the nineties, that was the big thing uh, they're pointing out. We used to work on one for a record label, you know, in terms of having volunteers in major cities or online street teams, have you, what do you think of those? I think they're great. Um, a lot of the more advanced marketers now in the digital space are advocating for street teams, although they're not really like what they used to be with like people on the street handing out flyers and putting up posters. It, it's more like a digital way of doing that. So yes, think of a street team as who are my top fans and how can I get them to say loving, great things about me? How can I get them to help me um, and having a virtual street team is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, I know a lot of artists who do special like Patreons 
for just their, their it's not really a street team. It's like a, a team of people that support them. But yes, if you are looking to make an impact, you, you're not going to do it all by yourself. So a, a team is a great thing. I've seen artists do a private face group, uh, Facebook groups, rather, if you will, for their most active fans. So are they a street team? I don't really know, but they're their most active fans that they're asking them to do things. So I yeah, think exactly. that's great. And they're sending, you know, they're relating to them right. on a platform, which is, I mean, amazing. Right. So a lot of um, releasing now is done as single songs uh, rather than albums. How do you handle PR for a single song? I mean, do you do do you go s s the same kind of stuff? You work a couple months out. Um, how do you handle it differently? Yeah. So actually, our lead time for doing singles is incredibly short. Um, premieres are not what they once were, and there are we often forego premieres or we work with a small to medium website to do a premiere so that we're not burning the four weeks of your campaign trying to get a premiere, which might happen, you know, God knows when, weeks away. So short lead times. Oftentimes also we will start a PR campaign like only a day or two before the single drops on Spotify. If we're going for a combination of playlists as well as uh, music publicity, because obviously a playlist or on Spotify won't include your track unless it's already out. So we have to ride that wave. And we are, unlike a lot of PR firms, we do run four week PR campaigns for just one single or a single and a video if it's for the same track. And we get in, we get out, no one gets hurt. We hit a lot of outlets in a short short four week span and we get some leverage under a single release. Um, with the longer lead campaigns, like if we're looking for at three singles and an EP or two singles and an album release or a video and a bunch of other singles together, we will work for six weeks, 10 weeks and up to 12 weeks. So we are unlike most PR firms that like wanna lock you in for three months because we know most independent artists are not made of money and Many do not plan as well as our their no. major, label, major label, you know, friends. It's just they don't have the time to do it. You want it out there. You've got something you're excited about. You pop it up through your DSP, and it's out. Right. Is it similar lead time if uh, in terms of gig gig publicity? In other words, a lot of bands they're not going out on tour. They're playing a gig a month, a gig every six weeks, a gig every couple of weeks, et cetera. I mean, it's, is it the same kind of thing where you sort of target for a period of three or four weeks or? Yeah, we do. Um, we don't like being hired for gig publicity. I used to do it, Bruce knows this because he used to hire us to right. just do like, we have one date and it's in this one place and can you hit it really hard? It is so hard because there's a limited amount of PR outlets. In of local or outlets anymore, yeah. I mean, there used to be, our database used to be like 20,000. Um, we had local radio stations and the college station. And then there was like the female publication and the Irish publication and the Jewish publication. We would hit them all. Now there's so few in each market that um, we tend to do more just digital press. And then if there is a show that's occurring, of course, we'll hit the local media in that area. But right. we, we lump it in with a a single or an album promotion. Yeah, and that's a trick, a thing that people forget too, is that you're often promoting more than one thing. You know, you're promoting a release and three tour dates. You're promoting, you know, a, a number of things at the same time. And I don't think, you know, I think people forget that. It's like, it, it was so much about, I'm going to go into the studio for six months and release an album. And that was the event. But now really it's a series of smaller events, if you will, that are all linked together. So yes. that's great. Um, what, somebody asked, what sort of courses and training you do other than the free handouts on the website? Because I know, I know you do some, so it's a good question. We do. So coming up on the 23rd of September, we are relaunching our new webinar series. Um, the first um, webinar is going to be all about websites, how to build them, how to make them really effective. 
sign up to my email list and you will find, um, we'll, we'll hit you with all that information. We do also have some trainings that are for sale on my website. One is for crowdfunding and one is for publicity. There's actually a music publicity crash course that you can buy. If reading a whole 200 something page book is not your thing, um, I'll walk you through it with a, with a video series. Awesome. So one more question and then we're going to wrap up. Social is, I don't want to say it's everything, but it's certainly become a primary uh, way of, of, of publicizing. What do, you, what do you say to somebody who says, where do I start building a fall of, how do I start building a social media following? Where do I start? Any, any kind of tips? Start at home. I, there's this there's this sort of horrible thing that's happened in our new world of believing that you're not legit unless you have a million streams or a million followers or a hundred, like we're thinking in numbers that are way too big. I find that artists that can start with their friends, their family, their colleagues, people that know them and like them, build your social there first. I also find it's very, very expensive expensive to go to an entirely freezing cold audience. So like, if you know anything about buying ads or you've tried to buy ads, just going and targeting like, okay, my music is like classic rock. I sound like the Rolling Stones. I'm gonna go target people that like the Rolling Stones. Nine times out of 10, that's not gonna be the best target for you. If you're gonna be spending money on ads, you wanna be really careful that you also add some other things to that. Um, so yes, start at home, start with friends and family, do what Seth Godin says, which is you want to become remarkable. Meaning if one friend can remark to their other friend, hey, check out this artist, it's really good. That is a much safer, warmer place than jumping onto Facebook and being like, okay, I'm going to just find people who are X amount of years old, who live in this X amount of place and trying to hit them. Awesome. There were a lot of little questions about, not little questions, a lot of questions about niches, et cetera. And is it the same in the niche? Would you agree with me that pretty much your advice is across all genres? And that is in terms of targeting the right outlets, tar finding the right fans, et cetera. And whether it's gospel or it's rap, it's really the same. It's the same process. I mean, it's different outlets and different uh, voices perhaps that you're using, but it's the same process that your your three-step plan works it, across genres, right? It does, 100% work across genres. And um, Joaquin, and or no, it's um, Colton is in the chat saying, what if my yeah. show is less than a month away? That's okay. <laughs> like still go through the process of communicating with your fans. If your show is less than a month away, it's probably too late for the media. Go for your fans, go for your friends. How about setting up a text message? And even if you're texting only 10 people, that's 10 people who might show up to your gig. I think we're always so obsessed with like, let me get hundreds and thousands and millions of people. Like think about who you could just text really fast. Like, hey, wanna come have a beer at my show? It's coming up in a week. Awesome. So um, if you have general bands in town questions, they've been answering some in the chat, et cetera, but always know that there's artist support. That's not plural. So one S, artist support at bandsintown.com. So ask those questions, the bands in town related questions directly. It might take a few hours, but somebody will get back to you. And, and Ariel has so many resources. I mean, you can reach out to her directly. She's great at answering questions, but spend a little time on her website because it's probably there somewhere in a free article that she's written in a, uh, a course that she, you know, you can take for just a few dollars. I mean, there's all kinds of different resources there. So don't, you know, take the time to find the answers to your questions. A long time ago, somebody told me to be a student in the music business. And that's really the best advice I got, I ever got. And that, so don't be afraid to use the Google in, in Ariel's terms and, uh, you know, get out there and, and get your answers. So thank you so much, Ariel, for today. That This is just fabulous. And, you know, everybody knows they need to do this. And so few of us have the money to just go pay somebody to do that. And as you explained, even if you do, that's not the best route. So Thank, thanks so much for your advice. Any, anything you want to leave us with? Those the great pearl of wisdom? 
No, I just put you on the spot. <laughs> actually, yes, actually, I do. I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> Be patient with yourself. I think that one of the most horrible things about social media and everybody oversharing is they only share that glory moment. And I think it can make us feel reduced as artists trying to just get out there. One little article, one little, one little playlist, take a baby step and don't worry so much about the big, huge look because the true success and how you're going to succeed in this industry long-term, which I think is everyone's goal, you wanna make music for the long-term is not these like giant moments where I went viral. It's more about, I built in a steady way and I jumped from success to success to success as opposed to had a big blow up moment. So just go create a little success. And it's been a pleasure to talk to all of you and thanks Bruce for having me and thanks to Bands in Town. Thanks so much, everybody. And yes, you'll all get a link to uh, replay the webinar and, and some other information as well. So thanks to everybody. Take care. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you.